Hiya, I'm Tamusest, and let's get serious. Yeah! World of Warcraft is a game of champions. If you want to play a championship level, then you need a UI, a user interface, that enables you to play World of Warcraft with ease. And that is exactly what I am going to do for you in this video. I'm going to give you the UI that I've created, which is functional and clean, and it only uses the default UI. If you love LUI, that's okay. I've got a profile in here for you as well. First of all, go onto your desktop and get the desktop CurseForge application, all right, from the website if you have to. Download it and install one add-on, just one add-on. If you don't like add-ons, I'm sorry about that, but it's a very functional add-on. Blizz Move, it's called. This will enable you to move parts of the default World of Warcraft UI. That's all it does. Let's you drag boxes that you couldn't previously drag. So like your friends this, you can move it around. Now, once you've done that, open up Battle.net. On here, play. You should be playing Dragonflight. Now, in Dragonflight, we have got a new edit mode. Doesn't matter if we we're looking at this in the past, it's just in Dragonflight, that's when they introduced the feature edit mode. It's built into the game since the expansion Dragonflight and it's fantastic. It's missing some parts. It's not brilliant in every sense, of course. It's developing over time. But I'll tell you what it is. It's better than Bartender and it's better than Domino's because it's not an add-on. It's already in the game and it does most of the features those add-ons provide. So if you played a long time ago and you're coming back to the game, I recommend you swap to edit mode, okay? Now, we're going into Shadowlands because it's a nice bright area. Don't be alarmed, just so you can see my UI. These three bars right away, you might think, what the heck? Why would anyone want to play with that UI? They're not going to be there. They're going to be hidden in the end. But when you import my profile, this is what it looks like. There's the target frame here, over here, and this is the part, the player frame, all right? First thing, we need to go through some checks. So press escape, go on to the options panel, then go on to interface. Check, scroll down. I don't know why they have it like this by default, but they do. It looks like this, look. You have it with these two unticked. It's green. When you go into a raid, the, your mates in the raid frames, they're all green. You can't see their power bars. So tick the power bars and tick the class colors so you can see what classes you've got in your raid team. Um, you could also change this. Let's do the health text. If you want to, but I prefer it plain. And you can add main tank and assist if you'd like to instead as well. Or display pets, little, little tips and tricks. But I don't do that most of the time. Action bars, essential. You must have all of these ticked. And for the purpose of this video, please untick lock action bars. It's going to save us a lot of time, all right? Having these enabled means you've got more action bars to work with, which makes things a lot easier. Cross this off, and now we're going to show you the new feature. So if you know how to use edit mode already, and you're thinking, you know what, Tamusas, you sound like a nice bloke, but you're boring the hell out of me. I'm sorry. I'll try and get through it very quick, and I'll give the information that people need on edit mode to be able to do things properly. In my description, you will see like a big wall of text, like a code, um, and get into the game as well. Right now, get to the game, press edit mode, and open up to this menu. Once you go into the description of the YouTube video, take that, copy and paste that big code. That's my export code of my edit mode profile. Then go onto this drop down list, import profile, bang, and then put that in this little box there, paste it in and give it a name like for the Alliance. Don't give it a for the horde name. You know that's not right. You know it's not right. So press cancel here once you've done that or press accept in your case. Then make sure you've got the right one ticks, the one that you're working on. It should be the new one, whatever you call it. Now, set the grid size to 100. If it's not, just in case. This is the little, uh, the size of the boxes. Look, I'll show you by changing it. This is the grid size, so you can count the boxes. My screen is a 24 inch screen, but perhaps which is bigger. And perhaps when you import my ed edit mode profile, things might not be quite in place. So I'm going to take this away right now for a second, and I'm going to show you where things are positioned so you can easily do that if you need to. Uh, there is a buff rack as well. Let me put that up. See, as you tick things, they become movable. Even gives you a demonstration of how big they'll be when it comes to the buff rack and debuff rack. And um, when you left click things, you select them. This brings up another box, and this gives you the settings for that particular option. Say, for example, with the buff rack, which I recommend you don't move, my buff rack where I have it positioned here is slightly different from the default UI, and it makes a big difference. If you untick this now, crank, then it will make it so we can't move that, you see? So when you're editing things in here, make sure you've only got the things ticked that you want to edit. And um, when you do want to do something, if you ever make a mistake, so for, let's say, for example, you import my edit mode and it's, uh, it's all in the wrong position, it looks like this, and you're, oh, bloody hell, what's that, right? If that's what you get, then uh, don't panic. All you've got to do is click on it, make it yellow, and um, right-click as well if you have to. Whatever you've got to do to bring this box up for action bar three, and then you can go from vertical to horizontal. You can change the number of columns if you like. You can change the number of icons. You can do all these changes, increase the size, etc. It's all there for you to see. And um, to get it how I want it, 
uh, how I recommend you play with it, um, you should put it back to horizontal. You should then, snap tournaments should be enabled so that it can snap. See how it snaps to the different lines? The little line goes red. And this will also snap to action bars. See that crank? And it, it'll snap to that action bar below. So they're perfectly in line. So if you're a little bit like OCD and you want it, oh, it's got to be in line, man. It's got to be in line. Wah, wah, you like that? Then uh, you don't have to do that anymore because this edit mode has the functionality to be able to snap and crank. Just like that. Easy, right? Easy. So um, always show action bars. Don't tick that if you want to. And it means they'll only show if there's an action bar ability on it. Right? Got it. Good. Now, the one on the right-hand side is my personal preference one. That is to do with my video creation. And uh, just, I'm an old-school player. That's where the action bar used to be. You'll know that if you are too. And I quite like having that one on the right-hand side. You probably won't. So make sure you've got it as hidden, all right? Always visible will mean, I cross that off and press save. But when you're in the game, you've got that there as well. It's a bit much, right? It's too much. So first thing I recommend you do is, as I say, once you're edit mode, right-click this one, change the drop-down list to hidden. Cross it off, press save, all right? Next, the fire. The next thing I would say is, why, why, Tamusis? Why we got the default UI? Just, just, just. It's fine, man. I just put my buttons anywhere, and it works out well. Well, yeah, it kind of does, but you can make it easier, and that will make playing easier. I've played for a long time, and I have created this to help people to get their performance that they want with ease. I have seen it work with many people, and I'll be quite honest, I don't want to keep explaining to the people again and again and again individually, so I've turned it into a video, and I hope it helps you too. So if you persevere with it, you will not regret it. Take my word for it, all right? I believe in this, and I've, I've really thought it through. So... What is it that you need from your UI? It needs to be functional. Now, what makes the UI functional with the default UI? Well, the default UI is very different to this UI. And um, I have moved various elements to make it more functional. Putting things in the center of the screen makes them easier to keep track of. Making action bars bigger uh, or smaller in number as well makes them easier to focus on. So the one in the center is a bit bigger and it's smaller in number. The ones at the bottom are nicely spread across the screen so you can see them and they're a bit further down from the center of the screen, right? Because we don't need to see those abilities as often. Now, the ones in the center though, we need to see them often so they're in the center of the screen, bang, there they are. A bit like a weak aura, which you've probably seen. Now this way, you don't even need a weak aura. And sometimes then weak auras, you gotta fiddle with them, you gotta take action bars off, you gotta change this, tweak that, tweak it every patch, right? You gotta wait for an update, all that crap. You don't need to do any of that crap. Um, you can just supplement this UI with buff tracking weak auras if you want to, if you don't like looking at the default buffs there. You could even move my buffs out the corner and just use weak auras to track the buffs if you really wanted to. But if you're new, I recommend you just go import, follow me here, and you will not regret it. Just persevere with it a bit, and it will be bloody good, mate. Tell you now. So, um, the next part of the stage, I would say, is the three key changes that I've done that make this UI more functional. The first thing is I categorize and I organize abilities. So, I organize them into groups. So, like, you've got your, your offensive group, you've got your defensive group, your crowd control group, and then you've got your main rotation group. So, there's four groups there, really, I've organized them into. And I've just made separation and categorization on, so I'm only seeing things in uh, what I need to see, but also so that things are in logical places in my head so I can remember where they are. And that makes playing easier. You can get used to just having them in any old order. You can. People do. Some of the top players in the world literally have them in any old order and, you know, absolutely smash you. But in this situation, you're new to the game. I'm going to help you to put your uh, the right foot forward to give it you the biggest progress as quickly as possible. So first of all, the thing that you should do is, like I said, categorize and organize your abilities. The other thing that I do is I reposition the action bars in this way, like I've already said, and I make it so that some things are in different places for good reason. And also the buff rack, you know? And then the final thing I do is I turn off the default cast bars. So the default cast bars, they've been remade, okay? They're not what you would have seen if you played World of Warcraft years ago. They're very shiny and gold. I'm not gonna show you them in this video, but you should know what they look like if you've got default UI. Now, I have changed that. They're too shiny for me, way too shiny. And I don't like where they're positioned. You can change that, but the shininess is too much. So I've created a weak core that basically does the cast bars for you. And I've got scripts in the description down below that you can take. You just simply type them into the game and it turns it off. Or uh, uh, also you can um, use play to add on to hide the default UI cast bar. Uh, your player cast bar can be hidden by Plater. And that's a great add-on that I recommend you get. I'm probably going to do a video on that in the future. So look when I do a focus target. And look when I've got, you know, one, two, three. So three cast bars. All three of them have got a spark. 
which is basically this little shiny line, which means you can easily keep track and be aware when a cast starts and catch it before the end, okay? If you don't like that, just keep it default. My UI is built in a way that means that if you keep it default, it will still be bloody good, okay? So, next up, the next thing we need to do is action bars, and this is the most important part, especially if you are using LVI. If you're using LVI and you're thinking, mate, all this crap, not interested in it, I'm sorry about that, but I've got to do it for the others. If you're a baseline player, you don't want to use LVI, you need to know this stuff. So, now if you're an LVI player, it gets interesting too, because this part, the organizer of the action bars, you can do this whatever kind of UI you've got. You can apply this process. First of all, the first thing you should do is think about what abilities are in your main rotation for dealing damage. Okay, anything to do with damage, put it on there. Anything, no matter if it's wrong, just do it quick. So now that I'm about to do it, I've also put on a cleanse there because that's something that's important. I could do with getting the interrupt as well. I don't know where I've gone past that somewhere. I must have done. But uh, yeah, whacking all the things on there like that has nice to do with damage, apart from those two at the end, of course. It can have some extras in, that's okay, but the most important thing is to separate the abilities by type. So now, anything that's got more than a one minute cooldown, whack it on the bar below. It's two minutes for wings, one minute for that, and one minute for... Where's my final reckoning gun? I thought I got that out. Whoops. Final reckoning on there. And yeah, make sure you've got all your abilities, very important. Then you've got to go through and you've got to decide which ones are the most important for me to track regularly. Consecration, probably not. Uh, Hammer of Wrath, for sure. Uh, Judgment, for sure. Blade of Justice, oh yeah. Wake of Ashes, slash, slash, slash. Very really nice. Now these two, this is interesting, right? These two, no sir. These are like, you need power to even use them. Final Verdict or um, Divine Storm. And you don't even have a cooldown on them. So if any ability, as you're coming through all these abilities in your book, Anything that's got no cooldown, forget it, mate. Forget it. You can put it on display if you want to, but you don't need to. So why are you? There's no reason to track it. So whack it down there for now. And if you change your mind and you really like to see it on your bars, then that's okay. But the majority of the ones with no cooldown, get them out the way, mate. Make World of Warcraft easy to play, okay? So this will be our default UI um, main rotation at the top here. And this will go on the main rotation bar here in the center, right? Now you can add in a couple more. And I like personally to have my interrupt on there. That's what I like personally. You can put them in any order you like. And that's all right. Okay. Now, next up, we need to go into your book and look for any defensives. That's a defensive. That's the defensive. Defensives that can help you or maybe your mates. Any defensives. All right. Just whack them in a row. Don't matter about your order when they're on these three bars. These are our organizing bars. It's easy. Uh, where the glory is kind of a defensive, right? Kind of is. What else we got? A bop, a boss, and a okay, divine shield. Right now, biggest defenses, uh, they're gonna go at the very bottom here, like so. Ta da! And we're gonna put in the ones that we are to do with ourselves first, so like our own defensives. That's how I personally like to do it, and then ones that are gonna help my mates. Okay, and um, I'll put the biggest cooldowns to the far left. So, the biggest cooldown on these three is land hands. It makes sense to me. And that's how I do things. The biggest cooldown goes to the left on the bottom bars. So wings is the offensive, right? Um, so that's not going to go on that bar. The bottom bar is for your um, your defensives, your big defensives. And the bar above it is for your offensives. That's because the offensives are often a one minute cooldown and it's closer towards the center of the screen. The ones at the very bottom are defensives. So we don't need to keep on top of them as much. Now you'll find maybe that um, depending on your class, you've got too many buttons. It's not a big deal. You can just put other things in or reduce the size of these bars and make them towards the center. It's all about keeping it central. Now, we've got loads left. We've got to go through CC next. So CC. As the Paladin, I've only got about two CCs, to be honest. Um, but there's a lot of abilities as well as that that I'm missing. And I don't know if you noticed, but I've also put in Word of Glory at the bottom there. I don't even need to see Word of Glory. So that belongs off display in my opinion you could put it somewhere on display if you wanted to but now you've got these two on on um cc cc and mobility i kind of put in the same category okay so that i can organize them later but what i do then is i will have for example blessing of freedom wherever it's gone it'd be a paladin skill freedom of horse so you could then have your cc at the bottom here and organize your CC in a row like so. 
and have your mobility after your burst stuff. Makes sense to me. Offensive, defensive, and CC. You could put them here. At this point, it doesn't matter the last two. The most important factor that you must do, which will make a big difference, is create some form of separation, okay? Ideally, if your caster's got a lot of mobility, right, and a lot of um, CC, you put all the CC in one area. And then you put all the mobility above, like this, for example. Imagine if I had three or four more, and you put all the mobility up there. And then you've got offensives, you've got your CC, big, sorry, your big uh, defensives, offensives, defensives, your mobility, and then you've got your CC. So it's all about trying to create some kind of separation, guys. It doesn't have to be perfect, and it is your UI at the end of the day. But having things in the middle, oh my goodness, what a massive performance increase. A lot easier to track everything. All there, and having things organized. You know where to look before you even look. So you can see, you save time, you have an easier time playing the game. The buff rack is in the center as well. So... You can take my edit mode, you can go through this process by yourself and get that done. But what do you do now then? You're all you're all messed up still, aren't you? So I'll show you. What you need to do is with escape, you need to go onto your um, options, you go onto your keybinds, right? And then you go into quick keybind mode. Another new feature that you might not know exists, right? So quick keybind mode, you press that button and it's just like bartender or dominoes if you ever used it. As you hover over keys, you can now type in the key that you want, right? You might want to put in one, two, for example, right? and it will change those, okay? If you put in one by mistake, don't worry, press escape, crank, and it will dis disappear, okay? So don't want number two, I want that to be number one. Don't press number one. Oh, it actually fixed that, it does work. But you could, if you, if you didn't work, press escape and then put number one in manually, okay? So that's how you do that. You wanna bind these keys, because you're not gonna see these keys, right? So you would imagine if you bind these one, two, three, right? You bind them, and uh, maybe we bind this as number four, we put them together in a cluster, press okay. And we press it across, and then we get that. Put them there like that, right? Now that's going to be gone. They're going to be gone anyway. So look how clean your UI is now. Look, you're going to have, you don't need any of these. Now, Paladin Retribution is not the best example. A lot of classes have a lot more abilities than this. Um, but I thought actually it would be a good example to show you um, how, because if I had loads of abilities, you'd be thinking, mm, I can't relate. Whereas now you can relate. So once I've finished here, look. Press save, I've changed them all to hidden on the drop down list. I press cross. So this is what I'm left with when I play the game. So even with this, I've only got them that, that blank space. Now if you put your mounts in there, you put whatever you want in there, you've still got to put your trinkets in there, mate, on the offensive rack. You know what I mean? You've got a lot to put in there, really. It's quite a few things. Potions, health stones, macros, maybe. You want to get a flag like this on a macro like me for the Alliance? You know, there's plenty of things you can fill that up with, and I'll leave that to you. But the most important factor, as I said, is to make sure you categorize your abilities and you stick to the same layout of the UI. This is These two are the factors that make the biggest difference to your how easy you can play the game. So... What I will say now is beware of any import errors. And as I said, once more, I will remind you to use the grid. Use the grid, put it on 100, and you can just copy what I've got. Easy as that, copy what I've got. And you can see my raid frames, party frames are in the center here. That's what I like them. Maybe you don't like them there. You can put them all the way over there if you want. That's okay. Of course it's okay. I find it best to play like this where they're here because I've got the cooldowns of the mates on that side with Omni cooldown. In my future videos, I'm going to be going through add-ons. I'm going to be going through all kinds of things that you might be interested in. So hopefully if you found this very informative and good, if you find a, an improvement, a progression from your character and how well you can play with ease from this video, I'll be glad of it. And I'm very glad to help you out with it, really, because it was just a case, like I said, that I can't help everybody, and this video will hopefully do that. I'm sorry that it took me a long time to go through all the different factors. I've tried to cover absolutely everything. And um, anything that I don't cover, I'm going to put in the comments down below. A little explanation that you know, I'll miss this out. And uh, let's get that in there, okay? So, yeah, thank you very much for watching the video, guys. For the Alliance, get in there. Don't be intimidated. If your class is not in a good place, you know, don't, don't give up on it. Keep going. Get your spec, the one you like to play. Play right. Research what you need to research. If you're looking for mates to play with, I run a guild on Silvermoon EU. And uh, we'd be glad to get anybody involved that wants to play. 
and uh, we also do pvp on a saturday night we do ready battlegrounds i do arenas as well i'm streaming regularly and thanks a lot to everyone that goes in there and gives me a rally up i appreciate that i'm trying to do really well and uh, there will be more videos to do with setup but also helping you with tips and tricks in the game that i think i'm just going to go ahead and make videos that people you know can use and, and get a lot from so hopefully this is a good one if it's no good then tell me and i'll try to make the changes hopefully it's a good one for the alliance guys mitch Moses, remember good prevail